When you first start using a new digital audio workstation, there's a few things you have to know to set it up properly so you can start recording vocals and making beats. On today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how to set up Ableton Live so you can get up and going. That's coming up. What's up, y'all? My name is CNI, and welcome to Wrap Ups. This channel is dedicated to helping motivated, independent hip hop artists make the best music possible so they can share it with the world and create an adoring fan base that not only supports you financially, but throughout your creative process as well. But in order to do that, you're gonna need a digital audio workstation and you gotta know how to set it up so you can utilize it properly. And on today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up Ableton Live. All right, so once we get live going, the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, go up here to live and then click preferences. Okay, as soon as you've done that, uh, this box will pop up here and uh, we'll see it has a look feel on the side, audio, link MIDI, file folder, library, record, warp, launch, CPU, licenses, and maintenance. So uh, let's go over the first tab here, look feel. Uh, so I have mine in English. Um, this is to, to restore the original settings. There's not much here that you need to change uh, on this first tab. So let's go into audio. Uh, the, the driver type will be core audio. The audio input device is going to be... Uh, let, let's click the selector here. So you want to click the one that coincides with whatever your audio interface is. So it might be the Apollo Thunderbolt Twin. So we'll click that. Same for the output device. Click that. You don't have to worry about the channel configuration. Uh, I use the in-out sample rate of 44.1 because um, a lot of my plugins uh, don't have a higher sample rate. And when you go to export, if you have the in-out at a higher sample rate, um, you can run into some issues as the plugins won't have recorded onto the track. Okay, so, uh, and then we go to buffer size. I always go about the middle of the deck here, about 256. Uh, the higher the sample rate, <clears throat> the more latency you'll have, but it will have a lower effect on your computer. Um, the, the lower you go, the higher of a... Um, output your computer is going to have to put out and so it makes things run a lot slower so i go about 256 samples and then uh for the driver error compensation i take away 18.87 and that brings me to a zero millisecond overall latency so uh, this has to coincide with the midi keyboard and also the amount of time it takes to hear your vocals back when you're recording uh, the test tone, this is to uh, test the different types of tones here. Um, make sure everything's working. You can test the volume and frequency uh, so that you can test your EQs and things of that nature. Right, let's go down to Link MIDI. Uh, so see I have the 249 hooked up here. That's about all we need because that's the only device I have going in the file folder uh, this is for your plugins right here uh, you want to make sure that they're gonna be under library and uh, the proper plugin folder and then you just hit scan and it'll scan all of your uh, your plugins for you uh, let's see library this isn't anything we need to deal with record warp launch uh, so that's what file type it records in AIF. Bit depth the 24. What do we got? Uh, this this automatically warps uh, the samples, short samples, and turns them into loops. So we turn that on. You can turn it off if you want. Uh, default, default warp mode. I put it in the complex because 
it just makes things uh, sound a lot better when you're dealing with the editing process. And then create fades on clip edges I turned on. Uh, you, you can pretty much copy my settings here. All of these will work really good for you. Uh, and the multi-core processor support, turn that on. Uh, rewire, this is for like if you're running a different type of program with it, like Reason. Uh, sometimes I, I'll use that. Um, but I, I've never found the need to turn this on. Usually as long as I start Ableton first and then I start Reason. It, like if, I, if I'm trying to use an, another instrument from there. Uh, the, the rewire kind of starts up automatically for me. And then you don't have to worry about this as long as you've, you've authorized it. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, preferences in Ableton. All right, so there it is, guys. Not too complicated there. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. But if it's your first time using a digital audio workstation or specifically Ableton Live, I hope this was able to help you guys out a great deal. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I'll answer them as soon as I get a chance. And I'd love to have you guys check out my new track, Get Away. It's playing in the background right now. I'll leave description links for that in the comments below. It's available on all streaming platforms, Google Play, iTunes, as well as my own personal website, wrapups.com. And if this is your first time here at Wrap Ups, we'd love to have you guys subscribe. Click that bell so you can get a notification every time I upload a new video, which is twice a week, every Saturday and Sunday. And we'd love to have you guys come back for another episode right here on Wrap Ups.